My name is Tosin Moran Fala, for those of you who don't remember. And we're taking a field trip to Washington, D.C. to visit a summit on religious freedom, which is a high priority of our value system and of what we want to put into the world with our film project. The idea that people of any and all religions deserve to be treated equally, fairly, and with love and peace. Hey, I am here with Christian Watkins, Reverend Christian Watkins, who's associate producer of the whole bit. We have our badges from the Summit for Religious Freedom. We are just finishing up day one. Overall, I think this has been a really great opportunity to get in touch with a lot of like-minded people and individuals and organizations who also see the growing real existential threat of Christian nationalism, who respect Christianity and religion, but want to be able to call out when it is being misused and when it is being weaponized and politicized, which is happening all the time right now, especially in an election year. Yeah. One of the big takeaways from today, I remember Dr. Anthea Butler talked about it and others as well. You are here because you want separation of church and state. But what I need you to understand is that there are people who are motivated and who will die to put these two things together. And that is Christian nationalism in effect. Mm -hmm. Creating policy that is strategically playing on Christian whims to take advantage of our sympathies and promote their political agenda. Do you have any big takeaways that you want to mention? There was a moment in one of the panels where someone was like, fascism, you know, this is like what fascism looks like. And I think if we look back to like the Second World War and we see, for example, the Catholic Church um, was not very vocal in denouncing the Nazis. And that's where someone like Dietrich Bonhoeffer becomes prominent in the mm -hmm. community and was killed for his beliefs. Um, by the Nazis, I think that it's. A, I think the reason that they were equating and thinking about the rise of fascism is that oftentimes it's connected to faith communities mm. as a vehicle to kind of um, on ramp those ideas into a society and a context. There's a real political motivation to these ideas, and yes. a lot of it involves political control, um, and that cannot be overlooked. It's to use the tradition, not yeah. to reflect on its background or heritage or to like grapple with it. It's like we need this vehicle to make these really awful changes in your society and that's what this is what it's going to look like and we see that in in what the rise of fascism in Europe as well. It's strategic. This election cycle you would have to fight for every inch of the democracy that we are supposed to have in this country. One of the big takeaways is when we look at these cultural hot topics, divisive Christian topics like abortion, like trans rights, like gay rights, um, even like DEI, a lot of the time what we're seeing is a strategic mobilization from the conservative right, the extremist right wing to galvanize people behind a topic that they can turn into a moral issue for the susceptible Christian audiences. It is manipulating the good heart and intentions of Christians into what serves political interest. And that, as much as we don't want to be political, is an impossible to ignore um, intention of Christian nationalism. And that is what it's, that's what it is. The right is realizing that, oh, we're losing ground in this abortion fight. So what is the next scapegoat? What is the next strategic cultural issue we can we can manipulate people into morally believing is wrong so we can galvanize them behind our party, well then that's when they turn to trans issues. That's when they turn to trans rights. This is not just a country's movement. It is a nationwide movement, an international movement of religious nationalism. And so what we do here not only affects us, but it can affect the rest of the world. How you fight here will change things. And this whole summit, for religious freedom is about condemning that, calling it out, and this whole film project that we're working on, Pulpit, is about condemning that, calling it out. So stay tuned. Thank you so much. Bye, y'all.